ask your pastor or ask your camp leader these three questions. Why was Paul in Arabia? Why was Paul talking about a covenant with Ishmael? And why was Paul calling the church saints? Now, I can answer all three of these questions with one answer. Paul believed that he was the last and final Gentile messenger. As it is written, Paul called himself an apostle to the Gentiles, just like Peter was an apostle to the Jews. The first time saints is mentioned in the Bible is in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And he said the Lord came from Sinai, that is speaking of the prophet Moses, and rose up from Seir, that is speaking of the prophet Esau, seeing that Seir is right next to Judah. And Jesus' ministry began along that mountain range. Not to mention, Seir is Esau, and Seir comes from Edom, which is all Esau. And you maybe didn't know that Esau is the type and shadow of the prophet Esau, whose inheritance was stolen by a man of Benjamin from the tribe of Israel, whose name was changed from Jacob to Israel. There was a thief in the tribes of Israel, and that thief came from the tribe of Benjamin. Then it says, he shined forth from Mount Paran. Paran is Mecca. You have to look it up by looking up Faran. Not Paran, you got to look up Faran. Faran is Mecca. It is Arabia. And the man came with 10,000s. Notice, he said 10,000. 10, 10,000s of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them, for you know, this is speaking of none other than the prophet Muhammad. But we have a problem. Paul was looking at Deuteronomy 33 and 2 and was like, that's me. Paul believed that he was this guy. That's why it is written in Galatians chapter 1, verse 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia. And returned again unto Damascus. Now Arabia is Paran. So he is calling his church saints. Because he believed that he was the messenger. Spoken of in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And this is the reason why he was in Arabia. And he was talking about a covenant with Ishmael. Because he believed that he was the Gentile messenger. And he also was the man who hid the Egyptian in the sand. Now, you're probably like, what the heck is you talking about? Think about Moses. Moses murdered an Egyptian and he hid him in the sand. Moses killed an Egyptian and he hid him in the sand. Now, Moses, he killed the prophet Esau on biblical record. And he hid him in the sand. Paul has killed the Christian church. He never stopped killing the Christian church. And he hid that in the sand. Why? Because don't nobody know. That's why it says, and he hid him in the sand. Nobody really knows all of the evil that the apostate Paul has done. He has killed the prophet Esau. He has killed the church. And he killed somebody else. I'm going to read that scripture again. Moses murdered an Egyptian and he hid him in the sand. Now, who is this talking about? Who did he murder and hide in the sand? In the wilderness. There's a dead body hidden in the wilderness of Paran. Who is that dead body? Spiritually, who is that? Let's go to Saul's evil eye towards David. This is going to be in 1 Samuel 18 and 7. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands. See, thousands. You see sand in there, right? He's slain his thousands. And David is ten thousands. And Saul was very rough. And the saying displeased him. 
And he said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000. And unto me, they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And saw I, David, from that day forward. Saw, saw, David. Saw, saw, the Gentile messenger. That's prophesied in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. Paul seen the prophet Muhammad and he murdered him. How did he murder the prophet Muhammad? Let's go to Galatians 1 and 8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. That's how he murdered the prophet he literally says if there is an angel coming to you with a revelation this man is accursed he literally saw David he had so much jealousy in him he saw the Gentile messenger in the future and he murdered him he murdered him this man literally smote the rock twice Okay, him killing the church was no issue. There was nothing wrong with him killing the church. But when he falsely murdered Jesus, he hit the rock. And when he murdered the prophet Muhammad, right there in Galatians 1 and 8, he hit the rock twice. Now Moses is a type and shadow of Paul. This is bigger than Jesus. Y'all fail to realize that Paul was like a father to Jesus. Just like Joseph was like a father to Jesus. Just like Potiphar was like a father to Jesus. Okay? This is much greater than Jesus. This is in between two men. This is in between the prophet Muhammad and Paul. Paul was closer to Moses than Jesus was. And the only true prophet that was really like Moses, that was sent by God, was the prophet Mohammed. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 4.15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you. In other words, I have fathered you through the gospel. Paul considered himself the father. He looked at Deuteronomy 33 and 2. He looked at Habakkuk. Three and three. And he said, you know what? I am the Gentile messenger that was called out of Arabia. He believed that he was that messenger. That's why he said, though you have 10,000 instructors, yet have ye not many fathers. For I have fathered you. But what made Saul so jealous is because in history... There is a man that came in 629 CE with 10,000 Muslims exactly in Paran with a new book. Now, that's why the women were so prophetic. They said, Saul, you ain't got the 10,000. Saul, you only got the thousand. You only killed the men and hid them in the sand. All you did was murder the prophets and hid them in the in the sand. Saul, you're not the man of ten thousands. David is. Why? Because David was a type and shadow of the real Gentile messenger, the prophet Mohammed. That's what made Saul so jealous. That made him jealous. Now let's keep going in 1 Samuel 18 and verse 10. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied. See, that's going into Galatians chapter 1 8 when he says, Though you are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel than what I preach. Let him be a curse. And David played with his hand as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand, and Saul cast the javelin. For he said, I will smite David. Even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. This man was bent on killing David. Saul was a picture of Christianity 
as a whole, purposing to kill David. Okay? And when I say he murdered the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, I'm going into how he attempted. Okay? But it was a failed attempt. It, it failed. Okay? Islam is prospering. For the Bible says jealousy is cruel as the grave. Jealousy is the root cause of murder. When you are jealous, you are a murderer. That's why the Bible says when you hate your brother, you are a murderer. And his jealousy allowed him to prophesy and attack the religion of Islam in the future. But he was unsuccessful. David got out the way. He got out of the way. Saul has slain his thousands, but David is tens of thousands. Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. That made him jealous. Why? Because Saul only got the thousands. All Saul did was murder the Christian church. All Saul did was murder the prophet Isa on biblical record. And all Saul did was murder the prophet prophetically. With the thou says, with the thou hast said, you know, with his oracle. Read your Bible. Do yourself a favor and read your Bible. Because the Bible talks about a man who was David's counselor. And his name was Ahithophel. And the Bible said that his counsel was like the oracle of God. It was like the oracle of God. Okay. And the Hithopel is a type and shadow of Apostle Paul. Get it? A Hithopel? Apostle Paul? Okay. His counsel is the best counsel right now on earth. Okay. Right now, the teachings of Paul is the best teaching. Okay. But. There is some teaching that is in the nation of Islam that is like wildfire. And it is trumping everything that Paul brought out. It is the 10,000, okay, compared to his thousand. Everything that the Prophet Muhammad is bringing out is going to eventually swallow up everything Paul ever taught. All it's going to take is time. That's all. By Paul sitting up there saying, though we are an angel from heaven, preach unto you any other gospel, let him be a curse. That's how he eyed David. This man was so jealous, he saw the prophet's ministry in the future and tried to block it, but he could not. 629 CE happened. The prophet Muhammad showed up in Mecca with exactly 10,000 Muslims. And that is on Wikipedia. This is common knowledge amongst all of the world. He could not kill David. Saul always wanted to kill David. Saul always wanted to kill the religion of Islam. But he could not. He was not successful. Saul was a father of David. He was the father of David, but he was not the father of Solomon. Solomon was a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger. Okay? Peace and blessings be upon him. Now this shows you how much Christianity wants to kill Islam. Saul was trying his best to murder David. He tried his best to crucify Jesus in the Bible. But Allah took him and he is exalted in might. And right now, the prophet Isa is alive. So Paul was unsuccessful in murdering Jesus. The only one he could murder was his own church. Okay, his church is the sacrifice. As it is written, in the Hadiths, God will give every Muslim, a Jew, and a Christian, and he will say, this is your ransom from the fire. Other than that, all Paul could do was I, David. 
be so jealous towards David that he would see his ministry in the future and curse it. Paul wanted to be the Gentile messenger so bad. He wanted to be the man of Paran that showed up in Mecca with 10,000 saints, but the women shut him down because the women have sung the song that says Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. The 10,000 anointing did not follow Saul. The 10,000 anointing followed the prophet Mohammed. This is why the women were singing. The women were singing this. And it made Saul so jealous because Saul, all he got was the thousands, okay? And therefore, the kingdom was going from Saul and it was going to David. What is that telling you? There's coming a day when the kingdom is going to leave Saul. The kingdom is going to leave Christianity and that kingdom is on its way home. She's on her way home to David. Bring her to David. Okay? By 2050, 2075, it's already estimated that Islam will be the largest religion if God permits. So the kingdom is already on its way home to the nation of Islam. So this is what you got to ask your pastor. You got to ask your pastor, why was Paul in Arabia? Why was Paul talking about a covenant with Ishmael when he wasn't even of Ishmael? He was of the tribe of Benjamin, whose symbol is the wolf. He was like Jacob, covering himself with the fur. That was a picture of Paul stealing the prophet Esau's inheritance, trying his best to steal Bathsheba, which is a nation, which is a people. It is the religion of Islam, which washes before prayer, which washes after we urinate and defecate. We are that religion that promotes cleanliness. Paul tried his best to take that bride. He tried his best to take the lamb. He was a thief. He was a thief. This man tried to steal the Prophet Muhammad's mantle. And the Christian is so blind that they don't even see that their last and final messenger is Paul out of Arabia. They don't even see this. Paul was the thief. This is why Jesus called him a thief. You will be surprised that there's only stories in the Bible regarding stealing with the Jays, with Joseph. That was Benjamin, okay? Then with who? Joshua. Joshua killed a man and his family and all of his livestock for stealing. Jeremiah talked about stealing. And guess what? The last Jake talked about stealing in John chapter 10. He called the wolf the thief. This wolf is your boy, Paul. Go and tell somebody the truth is right here in the house of David. Let's empty that church. Let's empty that witch house. And although there are many Arabs converting to Christianity, that doesn't mean anything. At the end of the day, the turtle is going to catch up with the hare and Islam will win. Islam is the kingdom of God set up on earth. And the prophet Isa is the Messiah of another people, of another religion, just like Joseph was the Messiah of another country. Think about it. Jacob and his brothers had to go all the way to Egypt. They had to go all the way there. Okay? Joseph wasn't coming to them. He was the Messiah of Egypt. You had to come to him and get the corn. What is that going into? Jesus being the Messiah in the Quran. This is why the Pharisees were so pissed when him as the... This is why the Pharisees were so pissed when him and his disciples was picking corn, picking the Quran, picking the Quran. This is what anger the Pharisees, 
The Pharisees is the house of Saul. The Pharisees is what created the religion of Christianity. And all the instances you see in the Gospels with Jesus going head up against the house of Saul, that was a picture of Christianity versus Islam. Jesus was from the house of David. And he's been fighting the house of Saul. Paul is of the house of Saul. Don't you get it? His name is Saul. Oh, okay. Paul is the arch enemy of God. He is the arch enemy of God. And just like in the Gospels, Jesus was fighting with the Pharisees. That was a picture of the house of David and the house of Saul fighting. They never stopped fighting. As it is written in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 3 and verse 1. Now, there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. Right now, Christianity is getting weaker and weaker and weaker by the day. And this revelation you hear is only right here in the house of David. Like, subscribe, share this message. Let's get this truth out. If you can't beat it, join it. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.